For the Marlins, with a new skipper and a new attitude, this spring training has a very different feel to it. Today on Fox Sports Florida, we kick off our coverage in Jupiter as the Marlins get ready for 2016. Our first look at Roger Dean Stadium, Jupiter, Florida. Grapefruit League action. Come on inside. Our matchup, the 2016 Miami Marlins and the defending National League champs, the New York Mets. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Eduardo Perez. Al Leiter, Preston Wilson will be working with me as well this year. It's great to have you along. And certainly a, a, a real interesting look from Mattingly to Bonds to Nieves to Wallach, the coaching staff, and the, and the vibe is tremendously different. Without a doubt, different look, but the vibe, as you said, completely different. Forget about the facial hair. It's about playing baseball, donning baseball. So far, they're enjoying coming to the ballpark early and getting their work done with all the experience they have in the coaching staff. This looks like a really good team. I think that coaching staff will enjoy watching Sean Carlos Stanton. And the good news is he's back. You were one of his first hitting coaches in the big leagues. Uh, certainly, he's the guy that everybody looks up to. It all goes around number 27. He is going to be the key. He is the key to their offense also their defense and leadership. You need him. They know that, and they want to make sure that he stays healthy throughout spring training to start off the season on the right foot. It's our first look at the 2016 Miami Marlins. Marlins, Mets, oh yeah, Tom Kohler and Matt Harvey. That's our matchup when we get back. South Florida's largest Cubota dealer. Visit online at FloridaCoastEQ.com. 
Hi, kids. Welcome back. Roger Dean Stadium, our first spring training telecast. It's nice to have baseball back. Rich Waltz, along with Eduardo Perez. Let's meet the Mets, greet the Mets, the National League champion Mets. Some regulars in there, Alejandro De Aza, Juan Ligaris is in center. Really nice to keep Nuanes Cespedes for the Mets. Travis Darno, the catcher. Dominic Smith gets a start at first. Roger Bernardina, terrific outfielder in right. Eric Campbell is at third base. Ruben Tejada is at second. Matt Reynolds is the shortstop. And Eduardo, our first look at Tom Kohler. And talk about an exciting, excited Tom Fuller on the mound after Stony Brook, his alma mater, qualified for the NCAAs. He's going to be attacking the zone. You see those 77 walks last season with 137 strikeouts. Tom, the number three starter for us, the fish. Look for him to attack early and often and have that running fastball. Defensively, the Marlins have their regular lineup out there. Christian Yelich, Marcelo Zuna, Ichiro gets a start in right field. Giancarlo Stanton is the designated hitter and the infielder. Martin Prado, Justin Bull on the corners. D. Gordon, Adeni Echevarria up the middle. JT Real Muto behind the plate. What impact has Don Mattingly had on this franchise in just the, uh, the month of spring training? Detail. He's so in tune with the detail on and off the field, and he makes sure that every player and coach that is wearing that uniform has a purpose. And that is huge to have, especially with a team as talented as the Fish. And so the Marlins and Mets meet here in mid March, and obviously they'll play an awful lot when the season opens in early April. A former Marlin, Alejandro de Aza. And Kohler starts with a strike. De Aza trying to hang in the big leagues. Has had a decent spring so far. Juan Ligaris, Jonas Cespedes will follow for the Mets. And Kohler misses in. What are your expectations for Kohler in this one? Well, to be efficient as possible, I was talking with Juan Chinieves before the game, and he said, Attack the zone early and often. He wants that first pitch to be a strike, and that was a really good indication with Diaz. A low in the zone has stayed with all three pitches, and that's what you want out of your starter. He spent three years in Miami's rotation. This is his fifth season in the big leagues. And you're right, Stony Brook getting to the NCAA tournament, a big deal for Kohler. And a sharp hook for a strikeout. He punches out Diaz with late movement, and, and that's exactly what you want. You establish it with the fastball early, and then the bite on this pitch at the last mi a minute got Diaz. You see his reaction as soon as he swung and missed. He said, whoa, did not see that one coming. Juan Ligaris now for the Mets. Kohler 29. And another workmanlike season last year. 31 starts. 187 innings and right in the middle of Miami's rotation for 2016. Ligaris looking for a bounce back year of sorts. A terrific year two years ago. And he fouls that pitch off. It was a very good year two years ago. Gold glove uh, defense. His offense was coming around, but all of a sudden last year with that elbow issues he had was a little bit heavier to play center field. He came into better shape into spring training, and Terry Collins has noticed, and so have the rest of his teammates in the condition that he's come in. Well, certainly the Mets have designs on repeating what Terry Collins and his ball club did last year, winning the East, sailing through the postseason. In fact, the two guys in these dugouts, Don Mattingly and Terry Collins, Saw each other in the division series, and that was a tight series. The Mets won in five, three games to two. Manning Lee's Dodgers bounced. And then a sweep of the Cubs and on to the World Series. Ozuna won't get it. It's over his head, and Ligaris can run. And he's on his way to third, and he's in with a triple. And so the Mets in business here. 
And watch the route right here by Marcelo Zuna off the bat. See how he doesn't go straight to the baseball right then and there. That angle probably cost him a couple steps. Yet again, this is spring training. The wind plays a factor, but Ligaris right then and there coming out of the gate. Running, thinking triple, was able to get there. He could have probably done it standing up, but decided to slide at the, at the end. There'll be some more work with Lorenzo Bundy, the new <laughs> outfield instructor for the Marlins. Marlins have rotated Ozuna and Yelich with left and center, even Ozuna over to right. And here is Cespedes for the Mets. A collective sigh of relief from Mets Nation when they came to an agreement, a three-year, $75 million deal to bring Cespedes back. He was such a, a big part of that surge once he was acquired last year. It was a big part, and he stabilizes that, that offense for them. You don't know what you're going to get from David Wright earlier on in the season with his back issues, and, and to be able to have a mainstay in the middle of that lineup just solidifies the rest of the guys and takes the pressure off the rest of the players. Cespedes to center, not real deep. Ozuna's got a great arm. Ligaris is tagging. And running. Here's the throw on the money, and they got him. Marcel Ozuna throws out Juan Legatus. And for us at Fox Sports Florida, spring training is underway. A gorgeous one hop throw. Real Muto, the tag. Scoreless to the bottom of the first. There. Do they ask him about the route or do they ask him about the throw? The throw. We'll talk about the <laughs> route later, but the throw is what really stands out, and it's how he got behind the baseball to be able to get in the right position to make a perfect one hop throw to Real Muto at the plate, making it easy to place the tag. Ozuna, well, a nice year last year in center field. And yeah, the Marlins get ready to go at Matt Harvey, and they'll do it with this lineup, and it's the regular lineup, and an interesting wrinkle. Don Mattingly has had Marcelo Zuna behind D. Gordon, and Christian Yelich hitting in front of Giancarlo Stanton, who's back after a week's absence. Justin Bors at first, Martin Prado's at third, Real Muto behind the plate. Each role is started right, of course, in spring training. He used the DH, Danny Echeverria is in the nine spot. Matt Harvey, D. Gordon. Man, Harvey's fastball is up. Talk about the fastball. That's exactly what Matt Harvey needs to do is establish it. Has a lot of life to it. If he can do that, the rest of his pitches will just take care of themselves. The hard curveball. Uh, the beauty about Matt Harvey this season is forget about the innings limits. He's yeah. out there. He can pitch now and do what he loves to do and be on that bump. Bouncer out to second, Tejada on to first. 
Mets defense. They're still missing some regulars. In the outfield, Deaza in left, Ligaris in center. Roger Bernardino. I like the fact that you still have the Red Sox and the Reds out there. you got to make the club. Then you get the Mets cap on. Eric Campbell. Matt Reynolds at short. Ruben Todd at second. Dominic Smith at first. And Travis Darno had a real nice year last year, especially his second half behind the plate. All right, the dynamics of the batting order. Ozuna in the two spot. Yelich in the three spot. Makes a lot of sense when you look at the numbers. And it's about putting Marcel Ozuna in the right position to get fastballs. In two spot, he will. D. Gordon is on base. That creates more fastballs because you're worried about the runner at first base. And then you have protection with Yelich behind. Good contact hitter, a guy that doesn't hit into a lot of double plays. Right now, Don, Donnie Baseball is playing exactly that, and that is to put Marcel in the two spot and maximize his potential. And of course, it impacts Yelich, it impacts Stanton, and it impacts Bohr on, on down the lineup. Harvey's 2-1, catches the corner. And it's 2-2, two and, two, and, and he certainly is the cornerstone of a young and ultra-talented rotation for the Mets. Though he may not be the, the best guy out there. Jacob deGrom, who is uh, just 28, was terrific last year. Harvey deGrom, Noah Syndergaard. That's the one you have to watch out. And if you talk to Ricky Bonas, their, their uh, bullpen coach, he'll say that it's Steven Matz, the lefty. Breaking ball and a bouncer to third. And then Campbell's throw is in time to get Ozuna. So a pair of ground ball outs. And here comes Yelich. Yelich's year last year is a really interesting one in that he injured his back right out of the gate, tried to play through it, struggled at the plate, and really entered the month of June with uh, numbers that just, for a guy like Yelich, he just couldn't believe. But from the midpoint of June on, Yelich was one of the most consistent hitters in the big leagues. He ended up hitting 300. I think it's the maturity process. Last season, he signs the, uh, the guaranteed contract, tries to play to its potential instead of playing to his ability that got him that contract. And then once he realized that's what I have to be, that's who I have to be, everything started balancing itself out and becoming the hitter that everyone knew that he could be. Well, and health, too. I mean, and to his credit, he tried to play with the back, and it just didn't work. Oh, two pitch. And of course, Yelich, Ozuna, Stanton, everybody getting a uh, a first look with their new hitting coach, Barry Bonds. And that has been a lot of fun for everyone. That one pulled wide at first. Because you're talking about guys that watched Barry Bonds as kids. And when he walked in the room for the first time, there were a lot of uh, jaws that dropped. And they were quick to find that he was there to talk hitting. He's been accessible to all the hitters, not just the big names, but all the, the guys trying to make the club as well. You said it, jaw-dropping event as soon as he walked in. And one thing about Barry, when he played, he tried to keep everything simple. And that's the message he really wants his players to have. Matt Harvey looks in, in mid-season form as he strikes out Christian Yelich. Underway, scoreless, Mets and Marlins.
Bring your group to Marlins Park this season. Personalized experience, quality time with your guests, and an affordable cost. Perfect for family outings, birthdays, and networking. Call the Marlins Group Sales Team today. Make your group's reservation. 1877 Marlins. Go to Marlins.com slash groups today. Tom Kohler, inning number two. Rich Waltz, Eduardo Perez. Here in Jupiter, Florida. Travis Darno, Dominic Smith, Roger Bernardino for the Mets. Darno really came alive offensively second half of last year. Especially with the power. The Mets hit more home runs than I think people expected. And it wasn't just moving the fences in a little bit more at City Field. It wasn't. And Darno had a lot to do with it. 12 home runs from the catching position is is a lot these days. And not only that, he handled the pitching staff well. But going back to the power, adding Cespedes with the trade deadline really just balanced out with Duda and with Wright and the, the rest of the guys. Martin Prado, Danny Echeverria. It's Echeverria. Now, he said Tom Kohler's right smack dab in the middle of Miami's rotation. And here's how it sets up. Jose Fernandez, certainly at the top of the rotation, but the Marlins will be cautious with his innings. Wei and Chin, a terrific sign for the Marlins, slotted in the two spot. Kohler third. Justin Nicolino probably in that four spot, and some great battles for the back of that rotation right now. Right now, and uh, Cozart has done a phenomenal job this spring trying to solidify that number five spot, but the battle will continue throughout spring training and the consistency, and it has to do a lot with Juan Chineta as the pitching coach for the Marlins. He's come in and he's tried to bring in his philosophy to that pitching staff, and it's attack the zone early and be aggressive with your fastball. Trust it. Trust your defense. One of the best defenses in all of baseball the Marlins have behind you, and he is trying to let them know that they're there for them. Give us a terrific job in Boston, a world championship ring as the pitching coach for the Red Sox a few years ago. He, along with Jim Benedict, to the vice president of pitching development, who's come over from the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. That liner is going to find right field and a base hit for Dominic Smith. Former first round pick for the New York Mets in 2013. Smith stayed back on that changeup. Not where Tom wanted to throw it. A little bit up in the zone. Smith was able to stay back. I think the battle for the rotation, and we saw the first four. Adam Conley, who was really impressive at the end of last year, has had a great start to spring and has opened a lot of eyes for this new coaching staff for Don Mattingly, sitting next to Perry Hill for Nieves and Tim Wallach, the uh, trusted bench coach, comes over from the Dodgers as well. They're getting a fresh look at everybody. Conley's opened eyes. Nicolino certainly had his moments at the end of last year. Jose Ureña has looked good. Impressed all the spring so far. And I asked Nieves yesterday, just early impressions. And one of the things he said is, he feels that the ball club has more depth as far as starting pitchers go than, than he thought they would. And he was referencing certainly Urania, Conley, Nicolino, and Cozart, who pitched quite well yesterday. That ball into center field. Ozuna in there, and he makes the catch. And Bernardina is out number two. And don't forget about Edwin Jackson who was really good in relief last year and is trying to regain his form. Conley, Cozart. Cozart had the vertigo last year, and Conley, when he decided to really cut it loose in August and September, his numbers were terrific. And it's a battle, and it's a great thing to have, and especially in the game of baseball where things change on a daily basis. When it comes to injuries, you can have that depth there. And the experience of Edwin Jackson, knowing that he can also pitch in relief, uh, that versatility that he has, even though he wants to be that fifth starter, competition is always good. Eric Campbell.
Campbell getting the start at third base. The news around David Wright, no spring games yet. And the Mets did not want to get him out there too soon. Of course, last year, battling with spinal stenosis. Wright was able to get back into the lineup late in the season. And for that postseason run that ended in the World Series with the loss to the world champion Kansas City Royals. And how the Mets manage that with Wright at third will be interesting to see. Because there's issues at short, too, with the newly acquired as Drupal Cabrera. Right, and, and you have issues on the left side of the infield. Uh, you better have a pitching staff that has a lot of swing and miss potential, and that's one thing they do have is that swing and miss pitching staff. Uh, that being said, Terry Collins, I spoke with him earlier on in spring training. He said he's, you know, David Wright has earned the right to uh, pretty much monitor his situation, and he has to trust what the captain says uh, in order to be there and play. If he plays 130 games this season, that would be phenomenal with the uh, condition that he has in his back. Kohler now faces Ruben Tejada. And when last we saw Ruben Tejada, he and Chase Utley <laughs> had that meeting behind second base and the rule change this year, the biggest change to Major League Baseball rules is the sliding path at second base. Tejada knocked out of the postseason. Utley Apologize, but they apparently, in, just in reading about it, have not spoken. But it's good to see him back, good to see him healthy, and, and certainly he will be uh, important with the injuries and the issues that they've got the Mets do on their infield. Smoltz and Fair, and down the line. And Tejada is going to give the Mets the lead. Smith will score. Round third, here comes Campbell, and he scores. And Ruben Tejada, a player without a position coming into spring training with this Ruben Cabrera, named as a shortstop for the Mets, knows that he has now an opportunity to be that starting shortstop earlier on in the season until his Ruben Cabrera gets healthy with his patellar tendonitis issues. That's a good way for him to start off this game. Matt Reynolds now, the shortstop for the Mets. With two outs here in the second. Tom Kohler getting the start. Tom earlier on being aggressive with that fastball first strike now the first two pitches to Reynolds curveball curveball falls behind 2-0 he has to make his pitch right here and that's the fastball he doesn't have to give in but he can throw the fastball with location great location you're, as a hitter you're looking middle in right there 2-0 you know the hitter's going to be cheating if you can go and Establish that fastball on the outside corner. There's no way that a hitter should be looking out there on 2 0 count. Up the middle, umpire goes down. Gordon and Bohr knocks it down. Ball's loose, and the Mets are going to pick up another run. Boy, a lot of moving parts on that. From Chris Conroy, the second base umpire, having to dive out of the way, to Gordon making a nice backhanded pickup. But not a great throw to first. And this right here is not knowing too much about Reynolds. Reynolds, a below average runner, 4 5 on the 40. D had a lot of time. Tried to rush the throw, thinking, okay, I have to hurry right here. Didn't really establish his feet. I guarantee you, Bones, Perry Hill will let him know once he gets in the dugout. And this is what spring training's for. Get to know your players a little bit. The error will go to D. Gordon, the reigning gold glover at second base. The top of the order, Diaz's second A.B. Perry Hill, Marlins infields, 
instructor has his own little practice field called the Bone Yard. His nickname is Bone. A really nice profile of Hill and his career in the New York Times about three weeks ago. Tyler Kepner, fine writer, talked about not only Hill's process, the things that he teaches, all the gold gloves that he's won, so to speak. His infielders have won, most of them Marlins. You do realize when I was the hitting coach here with the Marlins, the boneyard, I was not allowed in there. No? No, he would say, I do not want bad habits coming into my boneyard. So I was told to stay away. <laughs> I guarantee you maybe that man right there is also told to stay away. <laughs> well, that man there on the left has got a lot of gold gloves. People remember the home runs and the batting average and the on-base percentage. Eight gold gloves for Barry Bonds. Eight, all in the outfield. Yes. The boneyard's all about infield work. <laughs> it's true. Stay away. <laughs> One of the beautiful things about spring training is there are really are no rules. I mean, there are rules, but you can run in the outfield. Or if you're a DH and you want to play right field, you can say, hey, I'm going to play right. Yeah. Re-entry rule. So Stanton is in right, which is a great sign. And he'll be tested here. Stanton to his left. Giancarlo is there. He makes the catch. <laughs> Terrific transition. Giancarlo Stanton will lead it off when we get to the bottom of the second. Welcome to our sales event. Jupiter, Mets, a 3-0 lead over the Marlins. Let's check in with Jessica Blaylock. Hey, Jess, nice to see you. Hey, Rich, good to see you again. Giancarlo Stanton heading to the plate. He no longer has that hammock bone in his right hand after breaking it last season and having it removed. Because of that, he's going to use a special bat this year. I've got a miniature model right here. Take a look at it, specifically the handle. This has been custom designed for Giancarlo to help take the pressure off of his hand and wrist and help him deliver his power more effectively. Now, guys, he's been using a bat very similar to this throughout the course of spring training. He says so far he loves it. All right, Jess, the Axe Bat, Eduardo, you a major league hitting instructor. Your experience with that uh, bat, it's, it is relatively new on the baseball scene, not, not only in the major leagues, but also colleges and high schools. I feel ancient right now, and it's all about technology. You look at it, and you, I've handled it, and it's pretty much like if you're, if you have a handle of a, of a hammer. I know they use the axe, but it's it's pretty much that, and it's contoured to the size of his hand also to relieve the pressure. And if it works for him and it keeps him in the lineup, this is good for baseball. The hamate bone is a hitter's injury. There's a long history in baseball of breaking that bone, hitters on check swings or just regular swings. And the Marlins would obviously love to have Stanton for more than the 74 games last year. The amazing thing is he had just 279 at bats last year. He had 27 home runs. 
pretty good thing considering also that they have brought in this, uh, the dimensions also at Marlins Park. You have that power combined with a new handle that will keep him on the field and relieve the pressure from the hammy. Uh, you're looking at if you can keep him healthy, it could be a stellar year for him. Pitches down low. Stanton is on his way to first, and he walks. Now that knee for Giancarlo is what took him out of games. But over the last three days, he has been full go, full workout. He just hasn't played in games. And so it's great not only to see him in the lineup, but for him to say, I feel good enough to go out and play some right field in this ballgame. That's a great indication. And I think Sean Cunningham, the trainer for the Marlins, has done a nice job of making sure that he listens to how Giancarlo feels. And also Giancarlo listens to Sean. Uh, this has been a recurring thing throughout the years with his knee, and it usually happens in spring training. So it's a monitoring thing to get him back on the field, a lot of standing around during spring. Justin Bohr now with Martin Prado on deck. Bohr, a breakout year for him last year. And he slices that one down into the Marlins' bullpen. Make sure they're watching, and they are. Is scattered. Or last year a chance to play on an everyday basis. Probably a third of the way through the season. And he responded with 23 homers, drove in 73. And that foul tip is held by Darno and a strikeout for Harvey, his second strikeout of the ball game. So for a guy like Stanton, Bohr, or even a veteran like Martin Prado, what's the impact of Barry Bonds? Because I think the headlines for Bonds, certainly all the home runs and the records he set, but maybe the most disciplined hitter in the history of the game. So as a former major league hitting coach yourself, where's the influence? Where What, what impact do you think he has on... The Marlin hitters. Approach. It's all about approach when it comes to Barry Bonds. And you saw it as a player playing against him. He had so much discipline at the plate, but he understood what his role was. Everybody talks about his home runs. It wasn't solely that. It was about taking the walk and counting on the guy behind you. It was about the work ethic. Stanton runs and a hit and run, and he's thrown out. But you take that as a good sign that he's healthy enough to go. That was a, a semi-pitch out and a great ball to throw on for Darno. Absolutely a great sign to see Giancarlo. Right now, they're just letting him go. Go as it feels. A nice slide. Forget about the out. Right here, it's about health. Proud a little tapper wide of third. And going back to the to the Barry Bonds effect, it's when you have a veteran guy like Martin Prado, which told me before the game, if I can get 70 at bats this spring training, I should be good to go. But Barry Bonds in the cage, just talking experience. Uh, he he's done it all. Well, how about just trying to focus more on the approach, the mental side of the game? Prado strikes out. When we get back, Don Mattingly joins us. It's Marlins, it's Mets. Spring training.
during training home for the Miami Marlins. Marlins, of course, share this facility with the St. Louis Cardinals. And the Mets have come down from Port St. Lucie for this Sunday afternoon. Our first chance to welcome in Don Mattingly, skipper of the Marlins. Don, how are you? Rich Waltz along with Eduardo Perez. Hey, Rich. Hey, uh, Eduardo. How you doing? Let's start out right away with your right fielder, or your DH, but now your right fielder. Uh -huh. Great to see him out. Great to see him running. Great to see him uh, in uniform and playing games. Uh, it is. Uh, didn't really want him running there, but <laughs> a little cross-up. So, uh, But it is good to see him on the field for sure. He looked good up there. Uh, looked like he ran good up to that ball down the line, you know, the, the fly ball down the line, and looked actually good running there. Uh, Don, let's talk pitching staff right now. We have Tom Kohler on the mound today. How, how impressed have you been with your starters and your relievers so far this spring? Uh, you know what? I haven't tried to really pay attention from the standpoint of being impressed, more about getting our work done and make sure we're going through the process. Uh, I will say the guys that, that you've seen really working, like kind of open our eyes, is, uh, is, is Conley. Uh, has thrown the ball really well. He's been on the attack. Um, again, just trying to see our guys so far. It's early. Just getting them out there. As we get into spring, then we start trying to evaluate, you know, where they're at. What's it been like coming in as a new manager, but with a team that you saw play in your five years with the Dodgers? No, it's good. It's that you know them a little bit. And I think, you, you know, you don't actually know guys. Uh, you, you've seen them play. Uh, you know there's talent. Uh, so that's the that's the one thing you look at is that you know this team's got talent, and and then you have some type of idea, you know, just watching the team and the things that happen to them, knowing their ages, uh, what happens with young guys, that some of the complications of that, you know, and what could could have been happening. Uh, we look at it now like a good young talented group that's got some experience under their belt, and we feel like the timing is right for these guys to compete. Now, you also have the Barry Bonds effect as a hitting coach. You were a hitting coach. You were a former hitting coach. You were also bench coach and now manager. How do you, uh, wh what's the effect that Barry has had on these young players uh, coming into the spring? Well, they've gravitated to Barry, and, and that's been a really, really nice thing. Barry's got a simple approach. It's not complicated. Uh, Frankie's been very good with Barry and our guys because he knows the players, uh, knows their routines. They've been able to talk. Uh, like Barry said a couple, you know, three or four days ago, he's been in that observation mode. You got to, you got to build that relationship with hitters. Been watching. The last thing you want to do is come in and just start throwing stuff at guys. You want to see them play, look at their at bats during the game, watch their work habits, and then start to form some opinions and then and see a little bit more and be able to talk to them about some things. Tom Kohler facing you in a Cespedes. A little tapper to Kohler. Now, we have video of you, and we were looking for video of you as a hitter, but we had to settle for video of you as a hitter against Tom Kohler, at least standing in the box. That's something that you've done, is you've stood in just to look at guys. Is this force of habit, or does it give you a better perspective of what a pitcher throws and what he's got? No, it's definitely about perspective of, of pitches. Uh, it's something that I've done since starting to manage. It gives you a good view of if you see the ball good off a guy, you wonder why certain guys, certain pitches they're taking, they're taking easy. Uh, certain left-handers, they hit good. Other ones, they don't. Uh, and when you see the ball come out of their hand, you see what's effective and you see why they're getting certain swings and why guys maybe are, are seeing the ball well off guys. And it, it gives me a better idea of, of you know, what their stuff does, who the, who how better to match them up, honestly. Uh, uh, you know, and then putting the numbers with that. Obviously, you're putting your numbers with that and, and trying to make better decisions. 0-2 is outside. Batting order. Yelich in the three spot, Ozuna in the two spot. Will you continue to tinker with that? Uh, I, I kind of like it. Uh, we'll see. We, you know, spring training rules don't allow you to really put your guys together that often. Uh, we will a little bit late, but I, I kind of like Ozzy in that two hole. I, I feel like he's a guy that that hits the fastball good. Guys want to get D out. 
Uh, if he's on base, you know, obviously that's the plan is he's on base. And if they want to try to throw him out, that, you know, we want OZ to be aggressive, get some fastballs to hit. I like Yelly in a spot that he's been able to drive in runs without having to necessarily hit for, think about him looking for, hitting for power. He's still an on-base guy. He's on base for uh, Giancarlo and, and Justin behind him. Skip, thanks for the visit. And we look forward to seeing you all opening right. night. Don Mattingly, Marlon Skipper, 3 nothing Mets. Miami, 3 nothing Mets lead. A little spring training baseball. Real Muto. This time last year, was uh, getting ready for a triple-A season. And was going to be the triple-A uh, catcher, Jared Saltalamacchia, who did not have a great 2014, was looking to bounce back, and it just didn't happen for Saltalamacchia. And that meant Real Muto... Became the everyday starter, a rookie catcher. And for a rookie catcher to play every day, you don't see that very often in baseball. But he did a real nice job, especially in the tail end of the season. Very impressed also the way he managed the pitching staff. This is not only, remember, he wasn't a lifelong catcher growing up. Middle infielder by trade converted to the catching position and uh, he has really taken a liking to it. His bat has worked at this level. That wasn't the question. It was more about how he can handle pitching staffs. Brian Schneider doing a lot of work with him this spring. New Marlin coach. You can join the Fish family today. Full season plans start at just $6 a game. Half season plans. And three great 20-game mini plans. All season ticket plans include entry into the Fish Family loyalty program and guarantee access to the 2017 All-Star Game at Marlins Park. Marlins.com slash season tickets. Father Time has not caught up with this man. The legendary Ichiro is back for his second year with the Marlins. He is 42. Started in right field, now apparently the designated hitter, and he fouls that pitch off. He's behind in the count, 0-2. He needs 65 hits to get to 3,000. Last year, Ichiro had 91 hits, but in almost 400 at-bats. And Don Mattingly has said that if Ichiro gets 400 at-bats this year, that means someone will have been... The plans may have gone awry. They don't plan to use Ichiro quite that much. And here's the irony. The man that he's tied with is his hitting coach, Barry Bonds. That's a strike fastball, and Ichiro goes down. The 
This looks like Matt Harvey from the postseason right now. It is, and he's painting right now. See where that mid is. Just missed a little bit over the plate, but Ichiro's looking for something on the inner part of the plate. You see those hips fly out. That's the quality of hitter Ichiro is. He will commit to a certain location, not pitch, but location, and sometimes you'll get him that way. But Danny Echeverria lines one into center field for a base hit. And Echeverria, who showed offensive improvement last year, has a two-out single, Miami's first hit against Harvey. And, of course, Echeverria missed almost the entire month of September with a hamstring injury, and he felt that that cost him a gold glove. He was a gold glove finalist. Here now is D. Gordon. And a one hopper to Tejada. Harvey looks sharp. The Mets have some early runs. And it's 3 nothing, New York. We just got to try to, to build some sort of trust. You know, he's got to trust when he asks me how I feel. I can let him know that I'm good for one more, and he's going to have to know when I'm lying and be able to make that, that decision to get me out. So, uh, you know, we, we all have a respect for, for Don as the, the player that he was. Now we have to learn, you know, Donnie the manager. Tom Kohler working here into his fourth inning. An interesting perspective from Kohler on Mattingly and, and the rest of the coaching staff, too. You talk about Mattingly as a player and the, the pedigree that he has, the resume, the nine gold gloves, six all-star appearances, an MVP, a batting title. But you go down through a lot of the new names that are on this staff, and, and you'll find major awards, accolades. We've talked about Bonds and his home runs, all his gold gloves, tw uh, eight of them. 14 All-Star games as a look at Mattingly. And his career, which spanned 14 years as a Yankee, a back injury in the later stages of his career, shortened that to 14 years. But Tim Wallach, his bench coach, a long major league career, Wallach, five all-star appearances, three gold gloves. Juan Nieves, who had his career cut short by an injury, he threw a no-hitter in the big leagues. Pride and joy of Puerto Rico right there. Juan Nieves with the Brewers, he threw that no-hitter. 
you can hear the wind is whipping up here in Jupiter. There is a chance of thunderstorms in the area. There is uh, Juan Nieves, 51 years old. Plays high school ball in Connecticut. As you noted, native of Puerto Rico. A little tidbit if you want to catch his attention at Marmon's Park. Call him Juan Chi. He'll look immediately. Call him Juan, he might be a little skeptical. All right, so explain why. It's just his uh, nickname. It's a, it's a way to really just... Uh, in, in Puerto Rico, that's one thing. Everybody has a nickname. What, what was yours? Eduardito. See, you add the ito to the end of it. Nice. Don't go there, though. I won't. I'd... Right. <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting to... now. You and I have been friends for a while, right? So, but we're just getting to know each other as far as broadcasters. I, I don't want to push the limits quite <laughs> right now. It's spring training into left field. That's a base hit from the Boston College Eagle, Eric Campbell. And that brings up Ruben Tejada. But my point with all the the hardware and the big resumes is that I, I think for this team that went through so much last year with the firing of, of Mike Redmond, with Dan Jennings coming from the front office to manage the team, with all of that upheaval and turmoil that the team went through, to see Don Mattingly walk through the doors, to see Barry Bonds walk through the doors, Tim Wallach, and then Juan Nieves, uh, it's made a, at least it feels like, and it sounds like, a profound impact on what is still a very young team, even though guys like Ozuna and Yelich and Stanton have been in the big leagues for four or five years. And w without a doubt it is. And not only do you have that, what some people on, on the streets would call the street cred with the numbers, uh, but you also kept really good core of coaches to complement the new ones. You have Lenny Harris, Perry Hill, Reed Cornelius. I mean, Frank Minichino having that relationship already with the players, assisting Barry with the hitting. I think that is going to pay off dividends. And then you bring in also Lorenzo Bundy, which will, be, uh, which will also help with the outfield coaches. You have uh, a vast uh, experience and knowledge when it comes to coaching and understanding the players and their development at this level. And at the end, I think it'll pay off well for the Marlins. Yeah, that's the, the, the interesting thing to see is will that change and will that experience tap into the potential that the Marlins have. That one scoots by Stanton. It goes to the wall. Campbell is going to score, and Ruben Tejada is having a day. Tejada with an RBI double, and now an RBI triple. Nice hitting by Tejada, but keep your eye on Stanton right there. That first step, and watch how he's running. That is a great sign for the Marlins. Just seeing him chase that baseball, drop down and make the throw. That's what Donnie Baseball is looking at when that triple is being hit. Forget about where the ball is going. He said it earlier. This isn't about being impressed. This is about seeing and making sure that your players are healthy and going through the process. And there, Giancarlo Stanton shows how healthy he is going after that baseball. That's the magic word. That's what everyone's been preaching in Marlins camp. And that is respect the process. And that process has Tom Kohler pitching into the fourth. The Mets are up 4-0.
The Mets four runs on five hits. And Kyle Baraclaw, the sturdy right hander out of Santa Clara, California, who got to the big leagues with the Marlins last year, a closer at double A for the St. Louis Cardinals. And in the Steve Ciszek trade, Baraclaw joined the Marlins. And then when injuries and necessity called, Baraclaw really answered. You see the numbers that he had last year in 25 games at the big leagues. And what the Marlins saw, they really, really liked. Power arm, the guy that's used to pitching late in games. And he steps in here with a runner at third. Matt Reynolds at the plate. Breaking ball for a strike. That's a really good sign when you have a power pitcher snap the first one off with a runner in scoring position. Throw that curveball for a strike. Let the hitter know, I have it in my back pocket now. I can expand the zone. Another breaking ball and another strike. Showed a lot of grit. Coming from the St. Louis Cardinals organization was, a, was effectively wild in the minor leagues. Knock on him was, can he throw strikes? Last year he came in and he was aggressive. He wants a spot in this rotation from the bullpen. You know, he'll have this opportunity. And just like that, Bearclaw comes in and finishes Reynolds and finishes the Mets, who had a run in the fourth 4 nothing New York. Everyone along me. Uh, so far, the one that sticks out to me is uh, my very first one. You know, stand down on the line, and uh, it's, just, it's just really cool. It's hard to explain. Marlins and Tigers open up 2016. We will have an hour long pregame show that night. Marcelo Zuna, Matt Harvey. And Harvey misses with a breaking ball. Christian Yelich, Giancarlo Stanton will follow. Harvey has been terrific. Not much news there. Coming off a, a year in which he made 29 starts with an ERA at 2.71. And Eduardo, as you said, no innings limit for him. Although, you know, the one caveat for the Mets, and it's a it's a nice problem to have, is that all of the young pitchers, three who have had Tommy John surgeries, all had to pitch an added workload with postseason innings. You know, Harvey went 189 innings in the regular season, but he threw 26 in the postseason. DeGrom went 191, added 25 in the postseason. Noah Syndergaard and Steven Matz also had innings in the postseason. And I think for the, the Marlins with Jose Fernandez, it won't be let's shut him down after... A certain amount of innings. What the Marlins would like to do with Jose and the original plan now is to 
space some time in between starts so that when he gets to September, he'll be arriving at, at say, 180 innings or wherever it is. Not to burn up all those innings as the, as the Nationals did with Steven Strasburg and get to early September and have to shut him down. And then there has to do a lot with depth. And if you can have guys step in and sometimes just give them, instead of going every fifth day around the months of July and August, start giving them that maybe nine days off, skip them a start, and go from there with some of their starters, you could have that. Remember, last year in spring training, not a lot of people believed the Mets could be in the postseason. So things change immediately. A lot of them have the Mets as one of the favorites to win this division. If you ask the Nationals, they'll say they're the favorites. If you ask the Marlins, they'll say they're the favorites. So at the end of the day, they have the potential to do so. When it comes to Jose Fernandez, you have to be able to slow him down because he loves to be on that mound. Yeah, that's not easy, is it? No. Yelich takes down low. Jose keeps good company. Now, if you know Jose, he talks to everybody a little bit over the course of the game. Juan Pierre, Marlin legend. Nice to see him in uniform. Jose spent the first three innings sitting next to Barry Bonds. And those two have been down. Jose, the first thing he said when the Marlins hired Bonds is he wants to spend time with Bonds so he can teach him maybe a few hitting tips, but some pitching tips to give him the hitter's perspective. Well, you see who was doing all the talking there was Jose. That's not a, <laughs> not a surprise. <laughs> Have to love him. That's one thing. He is not starstruck by anyone. He will, as much as he does talk, he listens even that much more. And he really knows that absorb all the information. What baseball player does not do that? Ozuna's well, at first. Harvey had just 37 pitches coming into the inning. High chopper, Tejada flip, and a bare hand turn by Reynolds. And the Mets get two. One thing Harvey has been able to do is keep that baseball on the ground, let his defense work. Pitcher's best friend, 4-6-3 double play. The Danny Echeverria single back in the third, the only hit against Harvey, and here's Stanton now. For a few days off, you wonder if this could be Giancarlo's last at bat of the day. Stanton walked, was thrown out trying to steal second. When we talked to Don Mattingly, some cross signals. It looked like either a hit and run or a run and hit because Prado was swinging at the pitch and Stanton was thrown out. That's the bad news. The good news, he's, he ran well. A little chopper and it's out in front of the plate. There's a ball that rolls right in front of the plate at the same time. And Darno picks up the correct baseball. And throws down to first. <laughs> Only in spring training.
2016 Miami Marlins, new manager, revamped coaching staff. And certainly a different outlook. Mets on top 4-0 in Jupiter. Now that last play, Stanton a little tapper. And watch the left side of your screen. That would have been something that would have picked up the wrong ball. What do you do? How do you score that, Rich? Oh, uh, it's spring training. <laughs> Anything goes. Anything goes. I think you're just happy to, to move along, get the at-bat. And the Marlins go to their bullpen. You'll see multiple pitchers for both teams today. Brad Hand against Alejandro de Aza. And for Hand, the task is to earn a spot on the big league roster. To pitch his way into the plans. Hand has spent, since 2011, parts of each season in the big leagues. Last year, his first full year in the major leagues, 38 appearances, 12 starts, and an ERA of over five. Native of Chaska, Minnesota. We talked about the depth that the Marlins have in their rotation, especially with the young lefties and Nicolino and Conley. Deaza, Stanton after it. And it bangs off the wall, Stanton on a slide to pick it up. And the Mets have another extra base hit. So four extra base hits for the Mets. A leadoff double by Deaza. 3-1, you have to throw it right down the middle, let it rip. You see Giancarlo right there slip, able to pick it up and make the throw. Again, all eyes on him when it comes to his knee. Really excited that he's still in the game. <laughs> yeah, and you know, if you're part of the training staff or even Don Mattingly, you like to run players through a, you know, a checklist of, hey, can you do this, can you do that? I don't know that there's anything that he hasn't checked on that list so far in these four innings. We've seen him run in the outfield. We've seen him run on the bases. In football terms, you would say he has over 100 yards carry the way he's run out there. Stan, if you're just joining us, was the designated hitter when the game started, but then found himself out in right field, and he's been in right field for the past four innings. How happy is Ichiro right now not having to run as much as Giancarlo has in the past couple innings? Well, look, I mean, let's face it. The, <laughs> the thing about Ichiro is he's in better shape than any of the guys on the field right now. If you've ever seen his workout regimen and the, the little torture chamber of machines that he has in a trailer behind the Marlins' offices, which he's been able to convince Marcelo Zuna to go in and try some of those. I'd <laughs> love to see that one. I did, when I when I got into spring training today and into camp, I asked Barry, I said, Barry, who's been the most impressive player you've seen so far? Who's impressed you the most? And he said, without a doubt, Marcelo Zuna and that man right there, Ichiro. Uh, what he goes through to get ready day in and day out. No one else in baseball he's seen do that. And what he does today is the same thing that he did, at least when I played with him 10 years ago, with the Seattle Mariners. Stan will be tested again, this time going far to his right and making the catch shy of the track. Deaza will tag and move up 90 feet. And the Mets have a runner at third with Cespedes coming up. Well, I mean, add another 20 yards to the 100 uh, yard carry right That's there. right. <laughs> and that's a nice job by Ligaris. Hitting the ball the other way, driving it, getting the runner to third base. 
I mean, I don't think, has Yelich touched the ball in the last? Uh, no need, no. I mean, it's been all Stanton. Everything's been hit to right. But ba baseball's a funny game. You move Stanton to left field, they guarantee the next ball will go to left. <laughs> Tejada <laughs> did double the left. He had to retrieve one out of the corner. Infield in, Cespedes up. You wonder what the Mets' fortunes would have been had it been Carlos Gomez wearing a, a Met uniform for the last uh, three months. Or actually two months, but you stretch into the postseason, you make it three months. Cespedes into center field, and that's a base hit. Well, Brad threw that first pitch, fastball away for a strike outside corner. This time tried to come in to pound Cespedes, and as quick as his hands are on the inner part of the plate, gets him inside and drives it up the middle. As a young hitter, that's what you want to do, not try to pull it with a runner in scoring position. You know, Eduardo, we've talked about the process of players getting ready for the Major League season. And as a hitter, as a pitcher, you're not necessarily out there looking for results. You're working on things. And the process will bring you to the end of March in opening day. For a guy like Brad Hand, though, there's process and there's results, isn't there? I mean, he has to show, he has to have a good spring. Without a doubt, he has to have a good spring. And... He understands, and so does the coaching staff, that he has to be able to get those lefties out. And the way this inning started was with that left-handed hitter, wasn't able to attack the zone early. And runner gets on base. And and uh, he has to be able to get that out if he's going to be able to come from the bullpen. Throw strikes and field your position are the two elements of coming from the pen. So how do you balance the process with, I need... Results and I, I need them now. I don't I don't need them on April 5th This is where Reed Cornelius comes into play uh, Marlins bullpen coach. He's been around. He knows a lot of these pitchers that have been up here uh, They're going to have to wait and lean on him also with his experience and say listen. This was just an outing uh, This maybe two outings that were bad at the long run once those lights turn on it's a different game Brad hand will show up and that's the part he's going to have to rely on besides doing his effect of attacking the zone and being able to get out. And uh, you see Reed on the screen right now. He's a guy that Brad Hand has leaned on a lot ever since he came up in the big leagues. Travis Darno base hit to right field. Danny Muno is running for Cespedes. You see him enter the screen at the appropriate time. He's leading off second base. And Dominic Smith at the plate. And here's that lefty matchup that you're looking for from Brad Hand. Mets have uh, come and swung the bats quite well. Ruben Tejada with a triple and a double and three RBIs. Matt Harvey was sharp. Tom Kohler pitched into the fourth. And it's Brad Hand third to work. Kyle Bearclaw came in, got a strikeout to finish off the fourth. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Four, a flip, and hand is at the bag to get the out. So two outs. And Roger Bernardina is coming up. It's one thing the Marlins with Justin Bohr at first base have uh, really worked hard on. And it's something that Bohr took into his own hands in the offseason. Different regimen. Dropped weight. And Perry Hill and Bohr have been... Working hard and adding range and footwork around the bag at first. I mean, not only do you have Hill, who's responsible for all those gold gloves, but you have Don Mattingly, who's won 
an armload of gold gloves, nine of them as a first baseman. But what a luxury to be your be the skipper and be able to delegate. I think that's one of the key elements to be a successful manager is you have to count on your coaches and to have a Perry Hill, to have a Barry Bonds, to have a Lenny Harris that is, uh, to me, one of the best mentors coming off the bench. You have all this experience, all this knowledge. You can sit back and be able to manage and know that those guys are going to do the job and do it well. Speaking with Chris Johnson before the game today, he's also in uniform with the Marlins. He's, he told me, he goes, it's, it's, it's impressive, the coaching staff that they have here. Ed Chavaria throws out Bernardino. Mets on top, 5 nothing, halfway through. where the Mets lead the Marlins 5-0 in the fifth inning. A very slimmed-down version of Justin Bohr at the plate. That's because the first baseman lost a total of 20 pounds during the offseason, and he did it the old-fashioned way. He switched up his diet, he cut out the late-night snacking, and he focused on cardio while he was in the gym. Now, the good news is he didn't really lose a lot of muscle, so it shouldn't affect his power. But defensively, Richie, we're just talking about this. He's putting in the extra work. That weight loss should help him be a little bit more agile on first base. Hey, Jess, as well, uh, a different look from Marcelo Zuna. You could, a noticeable difference in, in his body type at the start of spring training as well. That's right, and Marcelo Zuna also talked about that, putting in the extra work during the offseason. And how about this? Throughout the course of spring training, Marcelo Zuna tried to do some work with Ichiro on the Pilates machines, but he said, <laughs> no, that was just a little too hard. I didn't want to keep doing that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't know if anybody can keep up with Ichiro on his his machines. Point of the game now where for the Mets, they'll start running some pitchers in. Bohr and the regulars in all likelihood getting their last at bats of the day. Rich Waltz, Eduardo Perez. And I think mission accomplished for John Carlos Stanton, not only back on the field. But a vigorous workout. He was the DH, decided he wanted to play some right field. Second inning on, he was in right. He went to his left, went to his right. He went back, he went in. He slid, he slipped. That's right. Here is Bohr against Jury's Familiar. And this is the beauty of spring training. Get the closer in the game when there are still big league hitters up there so that he can face guys that he'll see during the season, a little bit more polished hitters than those minor leaguers that usually come in late in games. He was terrific for the Mets in a pinch last year when their closer situation disintegrated with injury, suspension, and Familia as the closer, a 1.85 ERA saved 43 games. And was a big part of their postseason run to get to the World Series. Bor Prado, Real Muto, scheduled. And Bor swings and misses. 
Earlier today, you and I had a chance to head out to the Fox Sports Florida picnic. Rich, one thing you'll learn about me, wherever there's food, there's Edward Vito <laughs> eating away. Well, I'll that's pay for a, it later with cardio. That is a great look. No, a lot of uh, Don Mattingly was there. A.J. Ramos, Wei-Yin Chen, players and staff. And it's always an annual event for Fox Sports Florida up here in Jupiter. Part of the start of our coverage, the 2016 Miami Marlins, 150 games. Once the regular season starts, it's a really interesting schedule this year as well. See a good crowd here. Full house for the Marlins and the Mets. The Marlins will be playing in Puerto Rico. Two games against the Pirates on Roberto Clemente Day. Familia flips on over to first. Highlights of the schedule in 2016. And, you know, this is really interesting. It was announced this past week. The Marlins and the Braves will be playing for the very first time in Major League history on an active military base. Fort Bragg Army Base will host the Marlins and the Braves right around that 4th of July weekend. That'll be special. And then the Kansas City Royals, the world champions, are coming in. Interleague partners this year for the National League East are the American League Central. Local kid Eric Hosmer. Big part of that team. It's turned out pretty well for him. The amazing thing about the Royals in their run, I can remember two years ago where people were talking about Ned Yost losing his job and Dayton Moore running out of time to build that team. And here now they are twice to the World Series. Winners, of course, last year. And, and a fantastic minor league system. Keeps bringing those players. Those arms are impressive in the minor leagues they have. Romuto fly to center in the third. And Familia misses in. Talk about a team that knows how to shorten up a game. After the fifth inning, it's pretty much lights out with the Kansas City Royals the, the last two years. And I think for the Marlins, that's one of the hopes is that the Marlin bullpen, while it might not be to the caliber of the Kansas City Royals, will be good, will be deep, and will be able to, if the rotation isn't say met like still come in in the sixth or the seventh and finish the games it's identifying those roles and once caps went down with the tommy john uh, there's there's an opening there for for someone to grab it and someone's going to have to impress late in spring well the arms for the mets matt harvey and jury's familiar have been impressive so far fish have just a hit and are down five nothing
will play a regular season game at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. 12,000 seat stadium will be built. It will be turned into a softball complex as well. That will be a lot of fun. The other fun thing is a chance to chat with Barry Bonds, it's Barry good. Rich Waltz, hey, Eduardo Rich. Perez. How are you? Hey, hey, P. What's going on, babe? How good. you doing, Barry? I'm all right. Good, good. Everything down here is falling down. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what it's been like as a, as a hitting coach, uh, as the Marlins hitting coach, at least for the first month of spring training. How's it been? It's been good. You know, it's been a learning experience for myself. You know, you got to get to know the guys. You know, it's it's hard. You got to you got to come in with a with a mindset of uh, of a plan and. Um, my plan is to get to learn each individual hitter um, first before I start putting pieces of a puzzle together. You got to learn them. You know, I have to watch what they do, what their habits are, how they approach the game a little bit, see why they think the way that they think, and then hopefully I can help them put a little bit of pieces together and, and, and fix a little bit of problems. First time you saw Giancarlo Stanton take batting practice. <laughs> 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 Were you as much in awe as I was when I became head coach here a few years ago? Ah, uh, that guy's a beast. I, you know, the the amazing thing, Brez, was this, is that we are on, I guess it was field three here, and, and that man hit a ball over the other field, passed the shortstop into the outfield, and I just said, wow. I, I've never seen anything hit that far. It, it, it's amazing to watch. Um, his approach, it's amazing to watch just his work ethics. He works really well. You know, he has a plan in a cage of what he wants to do. Um, he works real, really hard, and, you know, he's, he's an amazing, outstanding hitter. Where do you think you can help him? What what areas, having watched him in person and maybe watched a little tape on him? Well, I, you know, I think people need to understand that they're all Major League Baseball players, and they're all good hitters. And um, my job as a coach, and that's the same thing as my father always emphasized, is to bring value to them as hitters. Um, they are who they are, you know. It, 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 my job is to help motivate them, hopefully improve little things that they, they feel that they're not doing right, and, you know, bring some value to them as ball players. And if I don't bring no value to you as a ball player, then there's no reason for you to listen to me. Um, and that, that's what I get out here and I'm trying to do with these guys. I'm trying to show them the positive things about the game of baseball, what, what you need to do, and, and you have to work at it. You know, you can't, you know, you know, you get some guys I've noticed so far, they do a couple little drills and then, you know, they, they think they got it and they, they stop doing their drills. And, and I'm, I'm emphasizing on some of that where how, how your practice is, is a lot more important and not to take that on the baseball field. Play the game and we'll do the little things that, and, uh, in the batting cages and stuff and, and practice to fine-tune the things we need to work on and, and, and finish off into the game. Barry, you mentioned your father, and he was a hitting coach, a major league hitting coach. Yeah. Is that kind of what steered you towards this? Were you thinking about this near the end of your career? Oh, no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, um... So what was the impetus? You know, I got with Dexter Fowler during the offseason and, and worked with Alex. And um, I had, a you know, little league clinics and stuff with the kids. And, um, you know, I just got to thinking that, you know, the, a lot of the things that my father taught me, am I capable of emphasizing that into other players? And do I have the patience enough to do it? Um, and that was a key. Um, is my expectations out of them are going to be too high? And um, I think Dexter... Um, really signified that with me and um, Alex Rodriguez. I had a lot of patience with them. Um, we did a lot of training together. We talked a lot about hitting and stuff and, and I realized that you know it was something that I, I liked to do and then when Jeffrey Lurie called me up and, and the opportunity presented itself I took it. How good has it been also to work with Frank Benichino? He's awesome. <laughs> Frankie's a man. I, I I try to tell everyone around here, man, he loves his job and, and he works hard at it. And um, he knows what he's doing. You know, he, he really does. He knows what he's doing. He loves the hitters and he really, really loves his job. And, and, and that's all you can ask for as a hitting coach. I mean, we're out here just to help. I mean, we I don't swing a bat anymore. I can't go out there. And, and do it for you. You got to you got to do it yourself, and just hopefully I can inspire you and, and put the right pieces together to make you a better ball player. Brad Hand with a full count as he works here for the Marlins. Barry Bonds with us, Marlins hitting coach. 
At what point are you guys itching for the, the season to start? I know you're almost at that point of spring training where it's like, bring on the games. You know, I, I, I always looked at spring training like this. You got you got this little wave that comes, you know. You, you get into camp and some guys are super, super hot and, you know, you get this and your body's got to go through this wall phase and then, then it'll kick in. I think spring training, you know, six weeks is, is about the right time. Um, it gets everyone kind of keyed up at the right time, the pitchers at the right times, the hitters to get the timing better at the right time. And also for, you know, those that, that put pressure on themselves and go into slumps, you know, I can emphasize to them saying, you know what, it's March 13th. Um, that's okay. We'll get out of it hopefully by April 5th. And, you know, it's like you, you have to go through that little seesaw, and, and some guys go through it a little bit longer than others, but it's good. I think that the length of spring training is is about the right time. Great. Right, thanks for the visit. I have a feeling this is going to be a fun year for you and for the Marlins. Nothing. Mitts on top. Mets on top 5 nothing in the 6th. Barry Bonds has visited with us. We've had Don Mattingly on. And it's the fun part about spring training telecasts. And now Ichiro in his second at bat pulls a ground ball the second. And he's out number one. Jerry Blevins is in for the Mets. Blevins taking over after Four really impressive innings from Matt Harvey. A one, two, three, fifth from Jury's Familia. And Blevins getting some work out of Terry Collins' bullpen. To Danny Echeverria has the only hit for the Marlins in this ballgame. I think. You know, in, in talking to, to Barry Bonds, just watching his face light up when you asked him about Frank Menachino, I think that's what so far and going forward makes this whole situation work. Frank Menachino, a hitting coach the last couple of years, now the assistant hitting coach, Barry Bonds, his first job as a hitting coach, to be able to lean on the guy that's done the job the last three years and work together with him has to be enormous, and you have a, a unique perspective. Because you've been a major league hitting coach uh, for a couple seasons with the Marlins. Well, one thing you cannot do is compete with what Barry Bonds has brought to the table as, as far as a player in those numbers. And put it there, obviously it's going to have instant credibility. But Frank Minichino has already established that relationship with the players. He understands what makes each player tick. And he can be... Uh, a great communicator not only with the players but also with Barry and getting him to understand what patience is all about because as a hitting coach you need a lot of patience and a lot of understanding and you got Lenny Harris as well the all-time pinch hit leader in Major League history so hitters there are some hitters on this team that have a great relationship with Harris and Chavaria Reynolds with a nice pick and throw to get him at first 
And you've got Lenny Harris, who is also a resource. And, of course, Don Mattingly, who is a accomplished and respected hitting coach himself. So you've got four guys that if any hitter has any issue or any question, they all have unique perspectives, and they all have had success in their field. And their personalities translate to the players. If they don't want to listen, I guarantee you Lenny Harris will let them know. Listen, listen up here. And look, at, look at your coach in the eye and get to understand how to be able to not only uh, be at the big league level, but to maintain and stay at the big league level at a productive rate. Lenny Harris was so good in the clubhouse as an extra player. Uh, he helped me out immensely coming up with the Reds uh, to, to the point where actually my career was uh, in, in a way better because of my relationship I had with Lenny. Understanding how to be that pinch hitter, understanding what failure is about in the game and embracing it and being being able to transfer it into and translate that into a positive later on. Harris's first year last year as a third base coach. And back again for 2016. D. Gordon. Not sure if he got a piece. I think he got a piece, and he'll hang in there at one and two. We haven't had really a chance to talk about D. Gordon much. He's been in and out of there with his at bats, but Gordon, a historic year, certainly. And that last day, I mean, the last day of the season for the Marlins, the last three years, two no hitters, and Gordon's incredible charge to win the batting title and overtake Bryce Harper on the last day last year. Talk about clutch. That's a swing, and Gordon is out. <laughs> Mets pitchers have dominated here today. Matt Harvey, Jerry's familiar. And now Jerry Blevins. John Carlos Stanton. John Carlos, this is your first game back in a week. A lot of baseballs hit out to right field. How are you feeling out there today? Good. Uh, I think I got tested in every angle, every corner out there. So um, it felt good. You got to see how it reacts the next couple hours, but uh, it felt good. Yeah, you're able to sneak in there, get in there as a designated hitter, too. Uh, say what now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I was in right field, so. It felt good. Your manager, your new manager, Don Mattingly, said that right now it's all about not impressing, but just learning the process and trusting the process. What are you focusing on throughout the course of spring training? Um, 
just just getting getting a good field. Uh, make sure you see see some pitches. You know, sometimes it's like get get your at bats and get out, but uh, you still got to work on some things so you're not uh, you know bombarded with a bunch of uh, you know new pitches or, or what have you. The first couple weeks of the season. Don Mattingly is a new face. Barry Bonds is a new face. What has it been like getting to know this new coaching staff? It's been great. A lot of knowledge. A lot of a lot of focus and and um, you know everything is well prepped and and and. Uh, well set for us, you know, so uh, it's been good. We got a lot that we've got a lot done so far. When we asked Barry Bonds about his impression of you, he simply said, wow, what has been your impression of Barry? The same, man, the same. He, he the, the knowledge he has, and you know, he'll, he'll say some things that you're like, I never heard that before, never thought about it like that, and you know that that's just scratching the surface of what he has. So um, it's good, you know, uh, it'll be a slow development, and, um, you know, it'll be great to have him through the ups and downs of the year. All right, thanks so much. Appreciate the time. Sure. Guys? All right, thank you, Jessica. Mets regulars have exited. And the Marlin regulars, you can see Marcelo Zuna along with Stanton on their way out. Martin Prado packing his bags. Brad Hand is still in there. Hand into his third inning in relief. Patrick Biondi, or excuse me, Kyle Johnson is up for the Mets and he clubs one to right and it's going to go to the wall. And the Mets are set up runners at second and at third. Good day for the Mets pitchers and hitters. Opening night for the Marlins. This year, Tuesday, April 5th, the Tigers at 7:10 Arrive early, enjoy all the opening night festivities. And the first 15,000 fans get a 2016 Marlins calendar. Secure the best seats available with a season ticket plan starting at just $6 a game. Go to Marlins.com slash tickets. Sometimes people will watch a spring training game and say that's, a, that's not a lot of work for a, a major league player. I mean, play four or five innings, pack your bag, go get something to eat. But what they don't see is... The players arriving at the facility at 7 in the morning and putting in three, four hours in the cage and in the backfields, drills. And you heard Stanton talk about how well the camp has been run, how organized that Don Mattingly's first Marlin spring training has been. Danny Muno up. Muno came in as a pinch runner. How's your scorecard? It's looking quite nice. I can tell you this right now. It's because it's blank. Absolutely. This is where you have to make the adjustments, especially in spring training. <laughs> I can tell you this, Danny Muno, out of Fresno State University. Fresno State qualifying for the NCAA tournament last night. We started our telecast talking about Tom Kohler and Stony Brook finally getting over the hump. impressions of Brad Hand tonight or today excuse me has to be able to attack the zone early uh, has missed a lot has been pitching from behind hitters become very good when they have 3-1 counts when they have 2-0 and 1-0 counts have to be able to attack and be able to expand the zone and this is part of the process and fortunately for Brad he uh, for Brad he does have uh, history already in the major leagues, and they will be more patient with him watching him throughout the spring. Have to be able to keep the ball down with the infield in and runners in scoring position. The bag's loaded with Mets. Marlins' bullpen is active. Pitching changes made in the spring, not necessarily by situation or score, but by number of pitches. Scott McGuff, Marlins' right-hander. 
Getting loose. In the air, left center. And that is over the head of Perez. And it goes to the wall. The Mets are going to pick up a couple more. And I've watched a lot of Johnny Monell in Puerto Rico playing winter baseball, and that's one thing he does is attack the, the pitches early in counts. Left on left, Brad misses. Pitch was supposed to be hard in on the hands. Instead, stayed over the plate. It was hard for Perez to catch that baseball when he's playing Monell to pull. That's Jeffrey Perez. Out in center field. And then Juan Nieves with a visit for Brad Hand. Francisco Arcia, the catcher for Miami. This is now where the score is 7 0. You're going to play the infield back. Let's just get him out. Tim Tuffle at third base. Coach, letting him know. Make sure it goes up the middle. Mark Krause, big left handed bat for the Mets. Decent hitter, Mark Krause. Had him with the Astros a few years ago. Uses all fields. Big guy. Has very good power. Contact type hitter. For as big as he is. Garcia throws it away, but it goes right to Miguel Rojas, who's now at third base. That's a seven nothing lead. Here's a look. This is not something you work on in, in spring. This play where you throw it by the pitcher and try to get the guy at third. So just about every situation is worked on in the backfields for pitchers, for catchers. Today, Marlon shortstops were actually working on a ball to their right where they throw to third. 10 15 minutes on that ball to the right and a throw to third. It's a play that comes up maybe once every two weeks in the big leagues. It is. Was that done in the boneyard? It was in the boneyard. In That's the, why I didn't see it. I'm not allowed there. No, I, I have a special, special <laughs> papal dispensation where I'm able to uh, access the, the drills. Uh, I have to have a meeting with Perry Hill about that. One, two to Kraus. For those of you that don't know, there is Perry Hill's domain, the Boneyard. It's a backfield, and all it is is an infield diamond. There, there is no outfield. The fence is about, if you were to put a fence behind the infield here, maybe 10, 15 feet on the grass. That's what you got, the skin part of the infield. And a lot of the defensive drills take place on that. And there's a lot of gold gloves that have come off the boneyard. I think, what, seven now for Perry Hill with the uh, D. Gordon gold glove. All have been Marlins except for one Expo. Orlando Cabrera won a gold glove under Perry Hill as an Expo. And Bones is really proud of all those gold gloves, but really proud with Luis Castillo when he won his first gold glove and instead of the glove being mailed and shipped to Luis Castillo, Luis deferred it to Perry and when he received that in his home, it's on his mantle. It is. Now the good news is Louis would win two more gold gloves. Two balls, two strikes. 
This most likely Brad's last hitter. Misses with a fastball. So 51 pitches in. Brad Hand trying to get the lefty Mark Krause out. See Johnny Monell off of second. RBI double for him. A very good battle between Hand and Kraus. Mark fouling off tough pitches. Even with first base open, this is spring training, seven zip. It's about working on certain pitches. Love to see a hard breaking ball right here for a strike. There's your breaking ball, and it's fouled out of play. Well, Miami feels they have depth in the rotation and depth in their bullpen. Hand obviously trying to be a part of that bullpen. They have Mike Dunn as one lefty. Craig Breslow, the, uh, the veteran, is a guy that has a shot at making the team, and if he's healthy and he is. He could be the lefty specialist. No swing. And then Kraus walks. For Mark Kraus, that at bat right there. It's a big one. Ten pitches, you get a walk out of it. And Don Mattingly now will go to the mound and make that move. So Brad Hand's day is done. Here in the seventh. And he leaves with the bags loaded and nobody out. Scott McGuff coming in. Beautiful day here in June. Florida Coast Equipment, South Florida's largest Kubota dealer. Visit online at floridacoasteq.com. North of Miami, a little north of uh, Palm Beach, Jupiter, Florida. Home of the Marlins. It's free training home as well, the St. Louis Cardinals. The Mets are here today. Rich Waltz, Eduardo Perez, Jessica Blaylock, and Scott McGuff. And McGuff takes over. He's the fourth to work for Miami. Tom Kohler, Kyle Bearclaw, Brad Hand, and now McGuff. Travis Tyrone. You can see the gaudy numbers he had in Las Vegas last year. 25 homers, 71 driven in. It is a great hitter's environment in Las Vegas. All kinds of environment. 
in Vegas. <laughs> I was just there, actually, a couple days ago. And spent three years there in the minor leagues. Cashman Field at the north end of the strip. Ball, ball, as you would expect, flies there. I was about to say, it makes you feel very hitterish. It does, although I will say, and, and when I was in the Coast League, that a lot of times you had a four, even a five-game series. By game two, the visiting team was not very hitterish. <laughs> they were hungover and in need of sleep. Because if you're in the Coast League, and back then you were bopping through cities like... Tacoma or Colorado Springs. Four or five nights in Vegas. You're in trouble. Into that right field corner, and it gets by. Galloway with the dive, and he's having trouble digging it off the wall. Two more come home for the Mets, and Tyrone with an RBI double. The Mets regulars hit. The Mets reserves are hitting. Isaac Galloway out in right. <laughs> See, look, watch his angle right here. Dives. He thought that ball was going to go a little further than it was. Now he has to cut a little bit towards his right and isn't able to catch it. And one of the biggest reasons is that flag. Watch how the wind is going cross from right field to left field, knocking that baseball down. This is one young hitter I actually like watching also is T.J. Rivera up at the plate for the Mets. Seen him a lot. Plays winter baseball in Puerto Rico. And he lines it into left center field. And that's two more for the Mets. Kraus will score. Tyrone will score. And Rivera adds on. See this off-speed pitch stay up in the zone, and Rivera just puts the barrel to it. Drives in not one, but two. And it's tough as a pitcher. You come in with the bases loaded, no outs. Try to minimize damage. There's been a lot of that. 11 runs, 13 hits for the Mets. And, you know, today we had the ability for the first time to visit in-game with Don Manning and Barry Bonds, two legendary Major League players, two guys who the public had been aching to hear from. And so we get terrific access to Marlins players and coaches, so we had them on live. And both of their half innings lasted about two and a half minutes each, and they were one, two, three innings. And here are the, the Mets in like the 35th minute of this half inning, putting up six runs. The Mets have scored runs in four different innings. Yeah, they would have had bathroom breaks between inter between questions as long as this inning is gone. Good block right there by Arcia, and that's those are all the little things. It's, it, spring training is it's a different beast than during the season. You just look at players as individual and try to evaluate them completely. And right there, the focus Arcia still has of blocking that baseball, still going down to a knee, and being able to get Delson Herrera right there and swing and miss. You're still trying to keep score here, aren't you? I am. I have, uh, you know, I was, this is our first telecast. This is my first game of the spring. So I'm working out the kinks, and I've just decided I'm going to the app. <laughs> <laughs> going to the iPad, going to the box score. No more Dilston Herrera sneaking in.
Gavin Sacchini. And he fouls it back. Mets did not bring a lot of regulars as far as position players, but they have some guys hurt. I mean, you remember we talked about David Wright. We just touched on is Drupal Cabrera, who was slated to play shortstop. And Yolanda Cespedes is actually wasn't even supposed to make the trip. And he came along today, so he wouldn't have to go tomorrow to a longer trip in Lakeland. Travel in Florida in spring training is something that isn't, isn't something that teams in Arizona have to deal with as much. And it gets better next year, especially in this area, with two more teams coming to the Palm Beach area. The new spring training home being built right now, and by all indications, will be ready for 2017. That would be the Astros and Nets. Yeah, the Nationals and the Astros. And there's word that the Atlanta Braves would like to get out of their spot in Orlando. On a hop, JT Riddle got it. The umpires are kind of looking at each other to see if it was a catch or a trap. Another look. Looked like a trap from the get-go. Yeah, on a hop. Huh? Patrick Biondi is up for the second time this inning. He singled to open up the inning. Kyle Johnson with a double. It was a very impressive single, actually, with Brad Hand throwing a breaking pitch down and away, and he was able to hit it to left field. Scott McGuff, the former Oregon Duck. You haven't been able to say that much in the major leagues the last 20, 25 years because Oregon did not have a baseball team for the longest time. They stopped the program. I think the success of their rival, their bitter rival, which is only what 40, 45 minutes away from them, Oregon State forced them to get back into the uh, baseball business. And now they have a, a nice program in, in the Pac-12. Mets up here, 11 nothing. And McGuff with a strike. McGuff originally from Pittsburgh. Wind's blowing everything up here. Spring training. Biondi walks. This is actually what you don't want to see if you're Don Mattingly or Juan Nieves is your pitchers giving up walks in situations like this. Try to attack, get that first strike. McGuff gets a first strike. Marlins and Mets will play each other Quite quickly on the schedule, the Marlins open against the Tigers, but only for two, and then head to D.C. The Mets will be on the road, so the Marlins will have their home opener. They'll be part of the home opener for the Nationals, and then part of the Mets' home opener in New York on a Monday. Interesting. We have Thursday game with a Friday off day. Yes, in, in D.C. In D.C., That's a long run. Don Kelly 
Good with the glove and makes the catch. And a long inning comes to an end. The Mets put six more on the board and lead it 11-0. But nothing. Bottom of the seventh in Jupiter. Antonio Bastardo out of the bullpen. This was actually a pretty big pickup for the Mets. Really good arm, left handed arm. You see those 66 games. 2.98 ERA. X Philly great. Able to come in, get lefties out. Also has good enough stuff to get the right-handed hitters out. Jeffrey Perez for Miami. Xavier Scruggs, Isaac Galloway will follow. And Herrera handles it. There's an out. Take advantage of a sweet new deal. The all-inclusive 10-game sweet plan. Six-game sweet plan as well. Comfort and luxury of your private suite. Flexibility to select your games. There's no blackout dates. Fixed cost. Great food and beverage menu options. Parking is available as well. 1-877-MARLINS. Go to marlins.com slash suites. Scruggs, who's had uh, some playing time here, homered yesterday. Marlins over in Fort Myers for a couple of days. Big power day yesterday against the Red Sox. Saw the Twins on Friday. Scruggs, a former uh, St. Louis Cardinal farmhand, and he played his college ball at UNLV. Got his first taste of the big leagues in 2014. And then Antonio Bastardo finishes him off pretty quickly. That's been the difference with a lot of pitchers now. You have to also be able to pitch effectively up. You see that slider stayed up in the zone. A flat one at that. 
Starks trying to hit it maybe 450 feet when he really has a lot of power. He doesn't have to supply that much right then and there, especially with two strikes. Here's Galloway now. Galloway's been in the Marlins system since 2008. Spent last year mostly in New Orleans. Guy that has it in, in scouts language, high ceiling, lots of tools, can run, can field, hit for power. I got it. Just want him to try to put it all together and has the five tools. Very good arm, very good defense. Now just has to be able to put those numbers at a consistent rate. the lefty out of the Mets pen and Mike Dunn is ready in Miami's pen. Isaac Galloway sees a fastball for a strike. Don Kelly on deck. Started with a high fastball, goes one, two, three. Arms out of the Mets. Both hands are really good. Familia, Blevins, and now Bastardo. Turn your loving on. You know, see the data in my flow Here to beat it, bang down like the wall of Jericho From the six shooter, pop, pop We vibrate your drop, drop Beretta, the spitter, with my manguera Feel the trip, drop Others bring it halfway, like beat shoes, they flip, flop Drop that one to see my profile, call me Alfred Hitchcock The sound is like a gunshot The others are just pin drop Boy, it can't get here soon enough, can it? Opening day, Marlins and Tigers Marlins Park And that game, of course, here on Fox Sports Florida Rich Waltz, Eduardo Perez, we have watched a windblown affair where the arms for the Mets and the bats for New York have enjoyed the day. For Barry Bonds and the Marlins hitters, they saw what looked like mid-season Matt Harvey for four innings, what looked like postseason juries familiar for an inning. And then Jerry Blevins and Antonio Bastardo have been really, really good as well. The Marlins go to their bullpen one more time. Danny Muno is up. And he takes a strike. He was a part of that six-run seventh inning. This is one guy right here where 
Juan Nieves and I spoke right before the game, as a matter of fact, and he was telling me, he said, I would love for Mike today to work on his changeup. So expect to see a little bit more of that, and that's what spring training's all about. That's a high hopper done. The former outfielder. He's going to be an infield hit. No chance to get him. Well, right now, right off, the, uh, right off the plate, no play at all for Mike. Fortunately, saw the hops right there by Don for a space. Always have to anticipate the bad throw. Especially on plays like that if you're a first baseman. Don did a nice job. Mike Dunn's been a Marlin since 2011. And he enters 16 as part of what uh, shapes up to be a, a pretty deep bullpen. Here's one of the hitters you like, Johnny Monell. RBI double in the seventh. One of the reasons I like him is so aggressive at the plate, understands the zone real well, and then especially with Mike Dunn, you have to be ready for that fi fastball. And right now, 2-0 count. Hitters pitch, Mike has to be able to establish on one of the corners. Up the middle. Nola to Riddle to Kelly. That's a pitcher's best friend. And Dunn gets a couple of outs. I'll tell you one day that's going to be really special uh, for Dunn is the that July 3rd date where the Marlins go to Fort Bragg. He has, uh, Mike has been just tremendous in the community since he's been a Marlin. And one of his, uh, his favorite charities has been the troops and the military. Well, he has an unbelievable respect for them and what they do. And uh, did he not spend last year there in the offseason? Well, he he was part of a, a Fox Sports initiative, a salute to the military. He went to Fort Bragg, where the Marlins and the Braves are going to play, and spent time there. Little floater out into center field, run down there by Perez. Mike Dunn looks sharp. Headed to the bottom of the eighth in Jupiter. Nothing lead. Marlins have managed just an Adani Echeverria single. Fox Sports supports proud to team up with the National Alliance on Mental Illness 
and their commitment to improving the lives of families and those living with mental illness. Learn more about how you can be stigma-free and visit foxsportssupports.com. Let's check in with Jessica Blaylock. Jess? Mike Dunn and Mike, a couple weeks into spring training now, what pitches do you feel like are working for you? Uh, you know, I'm just trying to throw all of them right now. Fastball, slider, curveball, working on my two seam, trying to get the curveball to play a little bit more this year. And, you know, it's just trying to, trying to get them all working really right now. Every guy has a list of things that they focus on during spring training. For you, what do you hope to accomplish before the start of the season to be ready? Uh, realistically, it's just going out and getting your work, getting your innings under you and, uh, you know, kind of getting your heart rate right. And, you know, it's not necessarily result-based, especially in spring training. It's more so getting your work in because one day you might be working on something that, you know, you might not throw to certain hitters, but that day you need to get that work in. Obviously a big blow for this team, losing Carter Caps, but you've still got guys like Kyle Barraclaw who came up last season and pitched really well once he was acquired from the Cardinals. You've got a guy like Brian Ellington who was tough down the stretch. How good can this bullpen be heading into the season? Yeah, you know, it's definitely a hit to lose Carter Caps, but at the same time, we had guys last year, like you mentioned, that got up and got some experience and kind of understand how the big leagues are. And, you know, we went and got some uh, veteran guys too, you know, so it's we'll see how the bullpen pans out. And, uh, you know, no matter who it is, I think we're going to be all right. How excited are you for that game that's going to be played at Fort Bragg? Uh, I'm, I'm extremely pumped. I've already tried to put in a special uh, order for some spikes for it, but uh, uh, I was very excited when we first heard about it, and I was all for it, so I think it's going to be a great deal. Thank you so much, yep, guys. Thank you. The guy does an awful lot of work uh, outside of baseball in the community here in Miami and uh, with the military as well. And as we noted, for the Marlins bullpen to be effective and be deep, having a, a healthy and an effective Mike Dunn will go a long ways towards that. Don Kelly walks. What an interesting year last year for Don Kelly. A frustrating one, obviously. He had that weird broken finger on a ground ball. And then as he rehabbed from that, coming back from that broken finger, elbow issues, he actually had a tear and he had Tommy John surgery. That's a long season right then and there. And fortunately, being a position player, you don't have to go through the extensive... Uh, downtime as a pitcher does after Tommy John surgery. Here's Miguel Rojas. Now this is a guy, Miguel Rojas, who really blossomed last year as a hitter. His work with Frank Menachino, you knew he had a great glove. That was his reputation. But in the last uh, couple of months of the season, as he played more, and he certainly played in September with Echeverria on the shelf, all of a sudden, you could see this guy could swing the bat a little bit, and he did. After a few adjustments, he's had a nice spring so far. Well, that was always what everyone talked about. Defender plus defender could go glove caliber defender, but when you can get the bat involved the way he was able to work with Frank and make, be able to make those adjustments in game and use the entire field that was the uh, the marking point the good news for Rojas which has the personality to fill in in many positions with the team up the middle the Marlins have bounced into a few of these today it's a 4-6-3 double play And so Jeff Walters, Mets reliever, has two quick outs. That 4 6 3 has been their best friend all day long. Both teams gets you out of a lot of trouble, especially after walking the leadoff hitter. Francisco Arcia, the Venezuelan catcher, 26 year old. Why are there more right-handed throwing, left-handed hitting catchers than other positions? That's a great question. I know it's at a premium uh, when you can be that lefty hitter and, and catch. That you see a lot of them. See, has spent most of his career in the Yankees organization. Also played some first base as well. 
He was in double-A Trenton last year. Marlins have Jeff Mathis back as their backup catcher. To back up JT Real Muto. Talk about leadership skills. Mathis has that. Takes a lot of pride in his catching. Well, to the Marlins, we talked about the, the addition of Jim Benedict, the vice president for pitching development, coming over from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jeff Mathis is maybe the director of pitching. Because he's like a, a coach in uniform and working with those arms. All right. Garcia strikes out. This game rolls along to the ninth. 11 nothing Mets. Every opening day special, even when you're in low, low A ball, you know, but being in the big leagues and being able to be a part of that opening day is going to be something special. In Jupiter, it's been a lopsided affair, but it's spring training. Marlins were happy that Giancarlo Stanton was in right field for half the game. And they've been able to get their regular arms work. Brian Morris will be the last to work, at least... Uh, by theory and by plan. Morris, a sturdy right-hander last year. Dependable 67 appearances and ERA in the low threes. This is year three with the Marlins. Of course, he came aboard in 2014, had that terrific second half after pitching quite well in a stocked Pirates bullpen. And that's turned into a, a nice deal. For Morris, an opportunity to pitch in the later innings. There were so many great arms in that Pirates pen when he was there. That the ability to to get out, pitch in the seventh, pitch in the eighth. Former first round pick of the Dodgers back in 2006. Travis Tyrone at the plate. Well, he was part of that big inning where they scored those six runs. Had a two-run double. And a flare to right. Galloway. And it's a foul ball. Mets with a, a different look on their infield. Mr. Cabrera, Neil Walker, no Daniel Murphy. 
Marlins will see a lot of Murphy with the uh, the Nats. Terry Collins, an outstanding season. And for the Marlins, after a 71 and 91 finish, managerial change, new hitting coach, new bench coach, new pitching coach. And at this point, a relatively healthy roster of young players that took step forwards in 2014 and then last year with all the, the turmoil, the injury to Stanton. I think everybody's eager to start 2016. Morris misses in. Tyrone walks. T.J. Rivera comes up. And it's odd. Eduardo, because it's the cycle of baseball, right? In the off season and leading into January and February, everybody comes out with their picks. Who's going to win what division? What are the teams, the sleeper teams? And last year, Miami was a, a team that, you know, some picked to get to the postseason and go deep in the postseason. They were kind of the darling pick. And it certainly didn't work out that way. They were 20 games under 500 when it ended. This year, the Marlins... I haven't seen on anybody's board. The Mets have dominated. There have been a few people that have selected the Nationals as a wild card team. And the Marlins have been under the radar. But I think on paper and just in watching camp, this is a better team than last year for Miami. And, and part of that is knowing, you know, the disappointments of, of the start last year, part of that was the issues that they had with the three guys they were depending on. Jared Soltlamacchia behind the plate. Matt Latos in that rotation. And, and Michael Morse at first base. And you add injuries to it, and that's where the recipe for disaster. But at the beginning, without a doubt, uh, the start of the season just really hit hard uh, with, for example, for me, because I chose the Marlins actually to not only get to the postseason but to get to the World Series last year and, and the way we set it up earlier on with our pool and, and uh, this year I think it's a very solid team a team I think it's a deeper team uh, but it's going to come down to their pitching it's going to come down to if the starting pitching can do their job in the first month of the season that will then create um, the confidence and the vibe for them to continue on the rest of the year and that's the importance of, for the Marlins, an enormous signing. It didn't make huge waves across baseball, but Wei and Chen coming from the Baltimore Orioles, slotting in in that two spot behind Jose in front of Kohler or Nicolino or the rest of the rotation. That's a very significant sign, and if he is what he's been, he'll be a, a, a very nice addition. Right, and, and I love pitchers that come in from the American League to the National League, and then uh, with Chen, and you have Chen that played and uh, pitched in Baltimore, which is a very hitter-friendly ballpark. Now you're going to uh, to this division, where I don't believe the ballparks are as hitter-friendly, especially at Marlins Park. Even if they bring in the fences, even if they brought in the fences, well, City Fields. I mean, you go elsewhere. The only hitter ballpark that's friendly there it's is Philly. Philly. Uh, besides that, I think every other ballpark in this division, Atlanta, plays very fair. The Nationals ballpark plays very fair. Dilson Herrera fouling that pitch off his foot. And that's the last thing you want to do in spring training. Terry Collins is out for a look. Seems that no matter... How big that shin guard is on that left foot for right-handed hitters seems to always miss it. That time, right over the guard. Young Colombian ball player out of Cartagena. I had the honor of actually managing him in the WBC qualifier for Team Colombia. How'd you enjoy that? Love the experience. It's uh, there's a 
A lot of people are conf- a lot of people mistaken just because you know the language, you understand the players. But when you start understanding their culture, that's when you really start identifying uh, more with each individual. The Dominican culture completely different than the Colombian one, than the Venezuelan one, than the Puerto Rican and Cuban one. So just getting to know the cultures in in and out for me was a great experience at the WBC. What other notable Colombian players were on that team? Edgar Renteria. Oh, well, of course. That's, team. I, I did not know that he had... Uh, what year was that? This was... Uh, we're talking 11, 2011, right after okay. the season when I was a coach here for the Marlins, went over to... The Cabrera brothers had retired by then? They had Holbert retired since, and, uh, But Holbert did play. He did? He did play. Ty Kelly will take the at-bat for the Mets. With Dilson Herrera down. A runner at first and one out in the ninth. And Brian Morris strikes out Kelly. That's a tough at-bat for Ty right there. Coming in with a 1-2 count. Calvin Sacchini for the Mets now. His second at bat. He bounced out his first time up. By the way, your scorecard looks lovely. Yeah. But at least I have something on my scorecard. <laughs> I have three solid innings on mine. And this, I mean, look, spring training games can get messy, but an 11-0 spring training game is... not going to be a clean... a clean ride. center field. That's a base hit. Nola dives for the ball and deflects it in a shallow center. And Sacchini's got himself a hit. And then the Mets have runners at the corners. As you said, even though it's an 11-0 game, this is one thing that I do like is the hustle from the young players, knowing they're being evaluated no matter what. Watch the way he runs the bases right here. Sees that he has an opportunity to go to third base. In a regular major league game, guarantee he'll probably stay at second base, not push the envelope. But there you have to be able to show your instincts and your, and your baseball IQ of knowing, listen, I'm being evaluated. I have to go third on that. Well, the evaluation for these players is not, am I going to make the team? The evaluation is what level will I start? Or if there's an injury in June or July, Will I make an impression on Terry Collins and his coaching staff? And if my name comes across their desk as a possible call-up, maybe that impression that a player makes in late February or in March will help him in a promotion to the big leagues later on in the season or from one level to the next when somebody does take that spot in the big leagues. Beyondi now. In that leadoff spot, the Mets have banged out 15 hits. And just as difficult as it is for hitters to face pitchers that they've never seen, it's also difficult for pitchers, big league pitchers, to face young hitters that they've never seen over aggressive hitters not knowing what their weaknesses are to be able to exploit just have to go about your job and try to hit your spots University of Michigan product 
is Biondi. Goes after a Brian Morris fastball. And he throws it by him. 11 0 Mets to the bottom of the ninth. is brought to you by Florida Coast Equipment, South Florida's largest Cubota dealer. Visit online at FloridaCoastEQ.com. Jupiter, home of the Marlins and the Cardinals for that matter. Spring training home. Home for two more teams next year. Buddy Carlisle for the Mets. As he'll try to finish it off. Ichiro is still in there as the DH. Buddy Carlisle was a teammate of mine in 2001 in the Hanshin Tigers in Japan. And he is still pitching. And a lot of credit I have to give him for staying in shape, being able to attack that zone, and being effective. And so, as he would say, relevant. So your first se your only season in Japan was 2001? 2001, my only season. You just missed Ichiro. You would be a teammate of his in, yeah. in uh, Seattle, but 2001 was his first year in the States. Right, and we used to wake up in the morning and watch the Mariner games because they televised them all in Japan. And Buddy would watch it with me, and now he's facing Ichiro here. And, and, here, you, and here you are making your Marlins television debut. Did Full you circle. ever, I mean, the, the 2001, that was the furthest thing from your mind. You were just trying to figure out what was on the menu at most of the restaurants over in Japan. Without a doubt, calling my interpreter all the time. You had to call your interpreter. Yes, because I, my wife and I, we always wanted to go eat without the interpreter. And there it goes, Ichiro doing his thing. That will be a double. The ball behind the bench in the bullpen. And that ends up out of play. Ichiro's got himself a double. So you and Buddy would watch Ichiro making his uh, Major League debut that year in 2001. And, I mean, it was total euphoria in Japan watching Ichiro and living that and seeing him just get hit after hit in his rookie season after Lou Pinella saw him in spring training and said there is no way this man will be able to hit <laughs> big league hitting and well I was there for that spring you were training. there for that one and that is a great story <laughs> that I mean that was Ichiro spraying balls over the third base dugout for a week and <laughs> Pinella calling him into the office with his interpreter saying son if you, son? If you want to hit in the big leagues you got to pull the ball go out there and pull the ball a few times today and each row and his interpreter spoke and Lou had no idea if, it, if the message got through and in that spring training game he I believe he homered and doubled twice in the right field gap and after he came out he walked by Pinella and, and said like that <laughs> <laughs> and Pinella ne nearly fell off the bench because he didn't know if he could speak any English but apparently he understood everything Pinella said. Ichiro knows more English and definitely more Spanish than what he leads on. Yeah that's an interesting point he, he does speak Spanish. And 
And he's at second with one out. Riddle out number one. Austin Nola now. <coughs> I try to tell a lot of my Spanish-speaking friends, obviously a lot of Puerto Ricans and Cubans, listen, Spanish is a lot like Japanese. Ball into right field. Ichiro's going to take third base, and Nola sneaks that one under the glove. Those are those are your favorite hits right there. You're a little bit late, seeing eye grounder. That play has to be made instead. You get the hit. Ichiro not not trying to run hard here. He understands what the score is. 11 zip, station to station. Jeffrey Perez now with one out. I'm still fascinated by the fact you had to call your interpreter on the phone. Now, that was before Siri, right? Way, way before, way before <laughs> iPhones. Come on. The first time I ever saw texting was in Japan, and I remember asking my interpreter, I said, what is that? Why is, oh, she's texting. I said, texting? Oh, yeah, another person. I said, well, that's what cell phones are for. Just call the person and talk to them. I said, that'll never, never go through in the U.S. Little did I know I was wrong. Way wrong. So where was your interpreter, like back in the States? No, well, my interpreter was with me in Japan, but when I went out to dinner, there are certain times you'd rather just go out to dinner with your wife than having someone there. Than a third the wheel? For you. Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> So an interpreter isn't exactly a wingman. No. He would answer the phone, moshi moshi, and I'd answer back. Did you run into Tom Selleck over there? No, but before, right when I signed, my agent said, watch the movie Mr. Baseball and multiply it by three. And I said, okay, thank you. And my, my agent was wrong. Multiply it by five. Perez with the count one and two. And Buddy Carlisle gets strike three called. Perez lingers at the plate. I'm not sure that he heard the strike call. Well, Jerry Meals right now, I think he's anything close that sounds like a strike, he's going to call it an 11 zip game in spring training. One thing you have to know if you're a young player is you have to be able to expand your zone with two strikes. Especially with the score 11 zip. Scruggs pounds one to left and it's caught by Biondi and Buddy Carlisle, your buddy from Japan, finishes off Miami and ends this spring trading game here in mid-March. 11-0, Mets. Beat the Marlins. We'll wrap it up when we return to Jupiter. The Fish and the Mets all done today.